Yo, what it do, man? This is Grindfest and the Therapist, man. I'm Demetrius, and this is... Sinia. We've been together for 28 years, married for 23, 22. Who's counting, though? But today is going to be episode eight, man. We're going to get into blended families. So, um, we are both was raised into a blended household. I was, and Sinia was also, too. So, we want to discuss on the differences, the difference of treating the children... Um, differently, I think it could be many different things of blended families. It's a whole lot of dynamics that goes into that cool. culture, beliefs, discipline methods, rules. Mm, like some parents don't know how to comb black kids' hair. Mm. That was your experience. That was um part of my mom's experience because she was Mexican, and so she really didn't know how to comb black hair. Oh, I thought she was being funny at first. I forgot about no, that. No, I wasn't. But um. Also, I would get into it because I, 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 from my experience, I have the differences. As um, I grew up, um, wasn't with my real father. Some of my siblings wasn't with my real father. Only person. Their both, real father? Their real father. Only person was my youngest sister. And her father was at home. So, it's little differences you see as a kid that most people won't notice. It's like when he came home from work, he always brought his daughter candy. You know really? what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like little things you see. I don't know if it was done purposely but, or. But I'm going to play devil's advocate because she was the baby too. True. And she's a lot. She's much younger than you guys. But as an adult, come on now. You, well, it, how old were you? How out. old were you? I'm going to say I was at what? High school? Junior high, high school, junior so high. Let's made, say like junior high. That would have made the younger to an elementary too. Yeah, so let's let's know you make excuses. I mean, you bring candy on just for your child. I mean, that's showing the difference. Okay. And as as a as a child, you start feeling neglected, rejected, in other little terms like that. What about you? You ever experienced any kind of differences? Of course. I don't know if they were covert, or obviously they were covert. But I guess what I'm saying is I don't know if they were intentional or... I I, I think a person would never admit it was intentional. I don't know. No, 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 no. Because the reason why I say I don't know if it was intentional or unintentional is because many times people parent based on the way they were being parented, you know, their upbringing. So I don't know. But, of course, there was differences. Um in the sense of, you know, these kids can do this. Well, and then we couldn't do certain things. These kids could eat this. We couldn't eat certain things. Um, but it went back and forth, though. I just feel like when you, if you are a parent and you have kids, you need to make sure that whoever you're getting with, you know, but by has the, the best interest of your yeah, kid. Yeah, but by that time, you don't have a baby with this person, and you just you seen the, the real for what it is. But maybe that's the problem. Maybe you're jumping in things too quick. I remember, like when I was a kid, um, they used to introduce us like, um, "This is his kid, and this is her kids." Like little things like that. As a kid, wait, you'd be the like, family did? Yes, yeah, so we went to his family's. Like th- these are her kids. Like now we never. You know what I'm saying? It's like did we what? So it's like as a kid, you start you start picking up little things, and then when you get older, you start like reflecting, like, damn, it was some really shady shit going on. You know what I'm saying? I mean, in that sense, I guess the difference with me and you with that is that I knew who my mom was. So even if they did, I don't remember if they did that because it wouldn't have it wouldn't have made a difference to me because I know I knew that wasn't my biological mom, right? Would you? Well, obviously, you knew that wasn't your biological dad too. So that type of stuff, his and hers. I don't remember that. If that happened, I can't ever say anything like that affected me. I would say the different things with the rules more of affected me. My dad was one of those parents, which I think was great. So it was a lot of us. It was a lot of us. And so if you had a now later, like a M&M, you know, one bag of M&Ms, he would make you share with your siblings and that could have went six ways, eight ways, five ways, just depending on who was at the house at that time. I think that would just make you be more selfish before you even get home with the candy. Like, shit, I ain't even about to open this at home. I'm about to wait till I go to school. Well, I think the principle <laughs> of what he was teaching was always share with your siblings. 
And like, basically, if you buy something, make sure they good too. However, I kind of respected that because on the other end, you know, when my step siblings would have things, well, I would say when my step brother would come with stuff, he was not made to share. And I'm not going to say his mom was right or wrong because that's what I'm saying. It's two different set of rules. And so what happens is the kids suffer from the parent not putting a gameplay in place from the jump. So not being on the same team. Yeah, so you have two different parents on different teams with two different rules. So like these is my kids, these is the rules they're gonna go by, those is your kids. This is what I meant. Right. And so I can't say she was wrong because just like what you said, you thought like a lot of my siblings thought it was unfair that they had to share their stuff. So I think when you get in a relationship with someone, you both come in with kids or a person with kids, there should already be ground rules established. So these kids are not adhering to a set of rules and these kids are adhering to a separate set of rules. So I don't think it's what's going on. I think it's more on the adults in the situation. Well, that's coming into a healthy relationship, but which is 90% ain't no healthy relationship. I'm not going to say 90%. That's a bit high. Because people, because even people even like go with disciplining. Um, cause I ain't gonna lie. When we was growing up, um, I used to be mad if you whooped my kids, and you're the mom. So it, even imagine a step parent as disciplining your child. If people will feel a certain way, like, hold on, is this coming from love? Or See, you, what are you, you got mad when I used to discipline them? Yeah, this is my kids because it's like I don't know. It's just you know what I'm saying. I wouldn't something. get mad if you disciplined our kids, except for a few times because I thought you went too far, but. Not that you abused them, whether it was verbally or whatever, right? But I know you're not going to hurt our kids. And I think that's what the, well, you know, they probably think that the person's so not going to help their exactly, kids. Exactly, because well, you're not really their hurt parents. Their kids so either. That's where that, that wedge could come in between because it's like, hold on. You might, you might try to be on some devilish shit with my kids. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, hold but, on, let me but, protect them so you don't, you can't do. I don't give you full range over my kids. You only get certain limits, which will cause a division because the kids could play off that. What I will say, the problem was in both cases was that we were thrown into situations before even knowing the person, right? So, for example, they shouldn't have never even been living in the house before a relationship with the kids and all that was already even established for you to even have a conversation with your kids about how they felt about that person. That's what I'm saying, moving too quick. You're not making the kid a, a determining factor of what's going on. You're making decisions without consulting the kid. Not And people be like, well, they're kids. Yeah, but who you bring in the household also affects them too. Yes, yes, because I was raised in an abusive household. You know what I'm saying? My, step, my dad used to beat my mom. She couldn't even talk to me about my dad. That would, that would have been an issue. So it's, that even plays a factor of who you're getting with and bringing your kids around. But can we both agree that they were both broken, though? Because if she was... Oh, yes, of course. Okay, so she's, she's making decisions from a, a broken place, too. True, but he was more physical, so you, he showed it when you see it. But that's what I'm saying. If you allow a man to beat on you, I'm sure you allow a man to beat on your kids. If you won't stand... And I tell people this all the time, and I really believe this. If you won't stand up for yourself, you're not going to stand up for your kids. So she wouldn't have never took the stance of speaking up for you because she didn't even know how to take the stance to speak up for herself. And she never did. I was banned from coming to the house. <laughs> now, that's even a next level of banning somebody, allegedly your kid, which is not your kid, but you would never ban your kid from coming to the house. You know what I'm saying? Just Not for the certain, reason that they did. Now, if so you disrespect in my dr- house or drug, drug addict, addict or some stuff, stuff like, that, like that yeah but yeah come on you, you know what i'm saying but you, it would take certain well, things to was, do i don't think i was still from your kids kid. so it's like you won't do certain things to your kid but you as a step parent you would I mean, that's not really my kid they will feel they got a way of feeling like hey, shit who gives a fuck and for my mom being weak she allowed a lot of shit so it was like I can never you know take saying? issue with my stepmom, and I'm going to tell you why. As a kid, I did. But when I became older, I, I didn't blame her for the things that were being done because out of obligation, she's not responsible for me. When she took the vow, she was, right? But at the same time, I really believe it's, it was my father's job to make sure 
that I was okay, right? That's just like if a situation right now, we split up, whatever. It's my job to make sure whoever I bring around is conducive of the well-being of my kids. I agree. I agree. So I think a lot of times we put, we shift the blame on the person because it's easier to go there. Oh, I, I don't shift the blame on the person. I always blame my mom. <laughs> So, you know what I'm saying? She's no longer here to blame. But at, at the end of the day, I never, that was her responsibility to protect her kids, which she didn't do, but she couldn't protect herself. So, But at the same time, I think it should be an equal share of blame because you're an adult and you're very aware of what you're doing. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like, if it's consciously, you know what you're doing. Oh, of course. But you know what I'm saying? People take advantage and prey on kids. Like I said, he wouldn't do half of the shit he do right, did when I was a kid right now. So it's like people prey on... You sound on, like you still got a, some animosity. Oh, it is animosity there. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... You haven't it, let that go yet? He say something smart to me, shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like I said, I keep my distance. There's no kind of connection there because I never looked at him as a father or nothing like that. So, hey, it is what it is. But see, as even let's even take this as siblings growing into the same household, we are all could have different stories. Like a lot of my siblings don't understand my story because I was older than them. So they I don't know if they experienced what they I understand your story. But what I'm saying is every child in the house could have a different reality. No, that's true. You know but in the situation that you're describing, I think everyone has experienced that. True. But who who, who knows how they perceive it? You know, so I think that would just be more of the less of denial. But I do believe you could be raised in a household and have different experiences. But I'm not going to even say different experiences because I think we could all be sitting at the table and experience the same thing and have different perspectives. OK, because yeah. we all in the same experience. But I think perceive people it a perceive way. things differently because sometimes I listen to my siblings and I'm like, what? Like, hmm? like, I don't recall that or I don't but it's not that the experience is different the way they internalized it is different true you get a coin on that everything everybody could um, perceive the same situation differently will results in a different story being told exactly exactly but I think with blended families you know it could be a beautiful thing or it could be a disaster it just depends on how the adults approach and enter into the situation um I can't, the blended, okay, so my mom and my dad, my mom left my dad when I was five. So he went through a period of dealing with different women until he just stayed with one woman and then was still seeing other women with her, right? So as a kid, I'm not understanding, like, what's going on. You know, I look back at it now. I think my sister is two years older than me. She knew, but I was kind of, like, oblivious, not understanding everything that was taking place perceiving the story different right because i was much younger well two years two years as a little kid that's a big difference right and so the things that she was being mad about i didn't understand why she was so angry but because i was only five six seven it wasn't really registering until i got older like oh this dude was cheating and doing this and doing this having us at this woman's house not even understanding that was what was that is what was Going on. That is what was going on. I finished it for you already. <laughs> you ain't got to finish it. I got you. Because I'm like, why does it keep coming out like that? You, you, you passed the assist. I scored. <laughs> Switch. Okay, nice. So, you know, when you look at things from a different perspective, and I even think as a kid I was angry, frustrated, and mad. And I think psh, probably like in my 20s, I was like, you know what, if I didn't go through everything I went through, I wouldn't still have that same level of anger if I didn't understand that it built me, not broke me. Because one of the things I do believe in, I do think many times as an adult, we blame our parents for our current situations, with the, which I think is an escape goal, right? As a kid, you don't have a choice. You're put in situations that you don't have any decision over. But once you become an adult and are able to make those decisions, you no longer have to be bound by what your parents yeah, said or but did. Some things is rooted in you. No, I it's no. deep down rooted in you. And some things just like a root can be unplucked, removed and replanted. So I don't believe that what you go through determines who you become. I think who you become is a decision. 
True. So even you still being upset with this man after all these years, and I really do not believe this man is the same person he was then, just like we aren't the same people we were 10 years ago. I would suggest you need to figure out on how to let that go. It is let go. I don't worry about it. But um, what I was about to say is, like, sir, certain things is rooted in you because I really – this is why I never wanted stepkids because I knew within oh my myself I would show a difference. Because you hear it, this, it, yeah, I, I, I'm being honest. I mean, dead honest. So, okay, I so so I, I got a challenge. I wouldn't you. be a good step parent. So let me ask at you the end this of the day because I I got an issue of you and pouring into somebody so much, and they just realize they could just turn the switch and be like, "Nigga, you ain't my dad." You know what I'm saying? So it's like, why set myself up for some shit like that? So and that's so a I fear never, of rejection. I never, I never put myself in a situation like that because it happened to me. So you still haven't healed from that because what you're saying is, even though I was mistreated as a kid, if I had a step kid, I wouldn't have a step kid. I wouldn't be in that situation. How do you know? Simple. I wouldn't be in that situation. So like say you, something happened, you had a baby and it wasn't by me. I'm removing myself from the situation. I wouldn't be a step parent, bottom line. First of all, I wouldn't go and have a kid. It's not in my character. Two, I don't know. I'm just I I just feel like a kid a kid doesn't have anything to do with the situation. I get what you're saying, but it's like a kid is an but innocent my thing is, If you know something is in you, why put yourself in that situation? So if you wait, know you're so gonna let me be a shitty this. ass motherfucker. Would you deliberately every, mistreat the I kid? wouldn't I wouldn't deliberately no, but I know rooted issues within me will cause a difference. So you wouldn't be as engaged with that kid? Exactly. I wouldn't be as much as trying to pour into the kid or trying to you know what I'm saying? Because hey, the kid gonna wake up one day, hey, nigga, you ain't my but dad. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know, so it's like you know, I respect where I stand and, and I'm not going to put myself like that. But I can respect the fact that you know that, which I think is easier said than done. Cause obviously you, you've been with me pretty much your whole life and all of our kids are together. So it's easy to say that sitting in that seat. Right. But I, I respect your perspective of saying I wouldn't do that, which in reality, I don't know. You don't, you haven't been presented with a situation to know what you would do in all reality. True. However, because of the situation, how what I grew up in, I was the opposite. I never wanted my kids to be step kids. So you just you was dealing with the same thing. You just reversed it. True, but at forty one years old now, if something were to happen, I would not. I mean, at this point, I have kids, so I wouldn't be able to say, "Oh, I," you know. Cause I that's why I'm saying you would either take one side, either or, or. like say in no, your situation, you how you listen. grew up, you would be more, you would, you would treat the step kids lovely. You would be nice. You would be that person because you know how I feel. Right. That I know how I feel. I would, I was, I would be on the opposite and it wouldn't, in, in, um, wouldn't engage what with you the step kids. So it's like, okay. So then, they, then you shouldn't, then what you're saying but is he, you wouldn't enter into a relationship with somebody that had kids. Exactly. But that's crazy to say when you have kids. Okay, the reason why I'm saying this is because I hear a lot of females, they'll be like, I'm not getting with no man with that has kids. And I'm like, you got kids though. Like it I don't it doesn't make sense to me. Because it's something to do with blended families. But this is what I'm saying. So Because they probably know they would mistreat his kids. Well, I can't even ask you, you know this because saying? you're not in this situation. But I would really want to ask somebody, like, how do you have the perspective of not wanting to be with someone that has kids, but you got kids. Like, that just don't make sense to me. Because a person know what they would do. This is like, let's let's go take it to an easier way. To, the, but these the people are not saying like, they would like do say, this. Like say, say you're a pedophile, right? You why you like, got to go so extreme? Because this is why people understand. I'm, I'm not going to get with somebody with little kids because I know I have an issue. It's like a... So I'm going to prevent myself from getting with people with little kids because I know I'm sick compared to. So are you sick? When it comes to treating being a step parent, I, I believe so. Meaning what? Meaning so you, I'm not going to pour into nobody that ain't got my blood in them. 
You always that's, say that's, that. You know what I'm saying? I take that to heart because the way I was brought up, I've been crossed so many times. So if you ain't got my blood in you, it's like I'm not about to pour into you. But I disagree with what you're saying because you have people that are blood related to me and not blood related to you. And I've seen you pour into their kids. That's different. What do you mean? How is that different? But you and I'm talking about raising a child as your own. That's what I'm talking about in your household. That's blended families, not blended cousins and shit like that. <laughs> God damn it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like shit. Oh my goodness. It's a, it's a whole different cousins. element. And the thing is, it's oh. just everything I dealt with growing up is just, I'm toxic when it comes to that. So I, I wouldn't put myself in that situation because so, I would break somebody's kid. So as a kid, did you know, like, I don't want step. Well, no, as I got older, I realized like, you know, what I'm but saying? you were already in a situation to make that it decision easy though. As a, what do you mean? Make the decision. What you were already in a situation to make the decision easy to say, I don't want step kids because obviously all of our kids are together. We've been together since we were kids. So it's easy to say that. I know. Cause I made it like that. What? But you didn't make it like that. Well, I don't even, well, look, I don't even understand what you're trying to say. Because I think what you're saying is, I get it, but it's easy to make that statement. Well, it's going to being stay on easy the side of the fence. That's, that's what you're the on. shit. And I'm going to stay on this side of the fence. I mean, bottom line, it's easy. Okay, so let's you know what I'm saying? let's move. It's easy. Move. So, so what is a way for so when people get in a relationship, they just should because most people be like, I, I, he can't he can't meet my kids until we like a year in or engaged type shit. But yet, I don't. Wouldn't you so. want him see how he interact with your kids? Are they like you know what I'm saying? That don't that don't really make sense. It's like a, a double sided sword. You know, no, what I'm saying? I don't you, think you should let a man meet your kids until you know his true intentions. And okay, he, he or she is serious. So now now you in a one year relationship. I'm not saying one year. I'm not okay, saying one year. But, but what I'm once, saying once you feel like he's you put in serious, time on it. You're okay, let's take time the time out. Once you feel like he's serious, you got feelings for this person now. Now he interacts with your kids, and now you can see he's a shit ass head. But your feelings is invested. Well, listen, and now you still going because now a lot of people are selfish. They don't care about the, what the kids got to go through. It's all about if they. But happen. you know, what my answer going to be. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, it's not everybody's reality. My answer is you should be seeking God on who your mate is. Period. However, we know that's not everybody's reality. But the thing is, I think your kids should always be first. You just love finishing my, I like, <laughs> no, 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 no. you like cutting me off. You like finishing my sentences. You, you like to go the long It's route, like, like, I shit. can't even, dang, go to, put a point in. Because you want to be all dramatic. Everybody know your kid should be <laughs> nigga first. Goddamn, say like. Because that's shit. not what I was going <laughs> to Trying to draw it all out and shit. Like, you should yeah, know man. your kid should be a priority in certain decision factors. Like. Again, people going to say, oh, they kids, they don't got no say. But when it comes to who you bring in the home, yes. And, I mean, you might have okay, some. Listen, let's, let's, let, me, let me finish. You may, <laughs> she wanna hold you the may have some, some, some disrespectful kids that it doesn't matter who you bring around that is going to be disrespectful. That wants you to get back with their daddy. Yeah, or just don't want you with anybody. That's different. But you should definitely see in Ask your kids, how do they feel about this person? How do they interact with this person? And really get to know this person and see how they interact with people outside of your kids. I don't think people take a full inventory on who they getting with. And then they disappointed in the end. But how much, man, y'all really need to get my book, Relationship Goals. Because this this is a huge part of talking about. Where they can find it, SaniaMile.com. SaniaMile.com. No, seriously, but not even just trying to plug my book. But really getting to know a person to see if they're an asset or a liability before you even engage and get serious with a person. Because once you get serious, it's done. You I don't say it's done. No, I'm you just... wrapped around. Once you in love with somebody, they could do all kinds of shit and you just gonna blow that's gonna blow by you. Like and I think that's where a lot of people I do fuck believe up that. At. I do believe when you're in love, there's things that you overlook. Versus a person that you don't care. Like for, for example, you can see a family member and be raggedy as all good out behavior. Like so dysfunctional is beyond ridiculous, but you will. And I've seen family members do it. They'll give these couples or this person a pass 
But then these other people do it. And it's like, I don't want them around me, but it's like, it's the same behavior. And it's because the behavior is tolerated because of the love they have for the person. So that's very true. Blind, a person, love, is love can be blind sometimes. Like when you, when you're in love with someone, you're overlooking key things that are right in your face because you want to ignore it because you don't want to believe the person that you love would actually do, do something this. like that. Yes. But when you hate that motherfucker, boy, you can you see everything. Nah, when you hate like, somebody, ooh, now you just, ooh, now you just thing. putting ooh. stuff there. Nah, but sometimes you, you don't even, you're like, ooh, I think when you man. hate somebody, if they say hi, they said something, if they, you know what I mean? So it is, it's, it's, it's both ends of the spectrum. When you love somebody, you miss things. When you hate somebody, you try to put stuff there that ain't even real. True. You got a point on that. It one. needs to be a balance. Balance. Look, let me get a coin on that. Balance that out. But growing up in a blended family, it was cool. It had its pros and cons, you know. But for me, I take everything in stride. You know, what didn't break me, made me. And I really believe that. Well, for me, growing up in a blended household was hell. I was gone at 17. Oh, yeah, I graduated at 17. I was gone. Yeah. Never came back. <laughs> Got banned from coming back. All kinds of shit. That's a whole other story. That might be a movie. You get a movie deal. Niggas will be mad on that. Why? Because all the shit I could expose on this blended family shit. Toxic. But I wouldn't even let you do it because it ain't even worth it. You know, and, and people are in different stages of their life thriving. Um, and I think people play parts. We had our hand in parts. Everybody played a part. Um, even though I was provoked to, to play my part. Um, I just feel like it, unless it's going to heal people and there's like a, a happy. It was a lot of egos too, you know. What do you mean? Like people just thought they was badass. You just want to touch on that so bad, no, and we're I'm not. not. Um, I just feel like unless there's a a happy ever after, or like showing someone how things can be turned around for the good, I really don't see the point of telling stories. Like, I think you should share your story, but if it's just to maliciously just out and expose it is, people, no, nah, I disagree. If it's my story, my story is, is my story. But what's your intentions on behind it telling the story? It doesn't matter what's my intentions. It's my story. Because at the end of the day, people are gonna perceive it how they want to. But so even I if I can say, people. even if I can say it's coming from a good place, I'm trying to help other people. People still gonna care. take it as listen. I'm being malicious. I and don't this and care. That. So what, it doesn't matter. God is only gonna judge me by my heart. I don't care what other people think. As your wife, I'm telling you, all jokes aside, dead serious. If you were ever to tell your story, because it is your story, you could tell whatever you want. Make sure your heart is in the right place. Because this is really what I believe. I believe you 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 reap what you sow. You know, when you do things out of a out of pure intentions, great things will come back. When you do things out of malicious intentions, the same things come back. So always mute, move with a pure heart. Regardless, yeah, it is your story. You can say whatever you want. But are you saying it to help people? Or are you saying it to expose people? That's two different conversations. Well, see, you all, now y'all got the experience why she saves a lot of people's feelings. What? Mm -hmm. I said, oh, wait. You, I be, <laughs> you be saving a lot of people's feelings. Because I'm going to stop you from doing something that's reckless, right? Um, we've all made mistakes, you know? They made mistakes. Granted, I just don't feel like you should nail people to the cross and have them there their whole life for a mistake. Mm -hmm. I don't think the I don't think based on my interactions with these people over the last years, they're the same people. Now, if they were the same people, it would be like, OK, but they're not. I don't even think he is. Who knows? I, I just think it. you want to keep him on the, on the cross. He never was on the cross. I just think you don't want to like him. I don't think he's that per same person. And that's why you forgive everybody. But no. move on. Let's move on. Because um, I'm not trying to hear the shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, blended families in the correct way to blend your family. Um, kids, no kids. But let's go take it biblical. You know what I'm saying? Why God really didn't intend people to have blended families. Do you agree with that? I definitely agree with that. I think if we really look at the pl blueprint of God, and what he teaches us, I think God saves us from, our, from ourselves a lot of times. And because we don't look at the Bible in context 
and we don't apply it, we end up in situations that are harmful and detrimental to us. If you never had sex before marriage, you wouldn't even know what sex was like. So a lot of times I hear people like, oh, no, they package is too small. They This is too that. They sex is horrible. And so now they out there having sex with different people. But if I never had sex and only had sex with one person after marriage, I wouldn't even know what to compare it to. So I would be content in what I already knew and the only thing that I knew. On top of that, y'all see, y'all heard that long pause because I was thinking. Let me let me tell you, no, <laughs> dramatic. Okay, let let me let me explain something. My mind is crazy because as how the okay, just look at the think of just get this visual. There's a lot of words being put into the computer, and is there the words are coming so fast, but the computer can't put them on the screen fast enough. That's how my mind is. And so when I'm talking or when I'm thinking, there's so many things being implanted at once. Sometimes I have to slow down and process all the information that's coming in. And then when I'm moving too fast, if you look at, that's why sometimes just like now, when I listen to myself speak, I get irritated because many times when the information is coming so fast, I don't even complete sentences. I already turn the corner and go to something else because that's just how fast the information is processing and my words, my mouth can't keep up. So I slow down to get the information to make sure that I'm completing a sentence with the information before moving on. Done. And I go back to what you were saying because wow. you got sidetracked again. Wow. Because you try to make you it already seem like forgot I was you, pausing. You forgot what you were saying. I did. What uh, was exactly. I saying? Exactly. This is what I this is what I deal with. See what I'm saying? So basically, this is why you shouldn't um I, I don't know either. Shit. Something about God don't want you to Oh have yeah, sex yeah, yeah, with yeah, all yeah, that. yeah. So pretty much even with having kids by different men or women, if you didn't have sex until you were married and you only had kids by the person you were with, you wouldn't have baby mama, baby daddy drama. You wouldn't have dysfunction. Well, you probably still have dysfunctional households, but when you wouldn't have, I, you wouldn't have households. I almost did it again. You wouldn't have households where there were division in a sense of when you have this parent, this mom feeding to this kid with this dad, and this mom feeding to this kid, and both parents are not the biological parents. Then what happens is you have these kids growing up having an issue with these kids, and I really believe. When you have situations like that, it's easy for division to manifest in the home. Why? Because we didn't go according to God's blueprint and pretty much we're self-sabotaging ourselves and not realizing it goes on from cycle to cycle to cycle. So then there's a such thing as generational cycles. So even though these kids have different moms or different dads and they're divided, right? So because the spirit of division is implanted into the household. So then when they grow up, because they weren't taught unity, even though their kids may be by the same person. Now divisions is implanted in that household because that's all they're accustomed to. Like you said, things are deep rooted. That's all they know. So then we go from one generation to the next generation to the next, all being divided, division, competition, comparison. I think that comes from more of a part of the woman, too. Because Just we, the woman? We, yeah, because we had, I grew up, we had different dads, but we never, it wasn't really okay, a division because we problem, all had the same mom. No, 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 no. The problem was none of your dads were active. True. So, so you could, so you were forced to just be with your mom because even though you guys all had different dads, none of your dads were in your lives. So you didn't have a household or another person pouring into the kid, dividing it. So that makes a huge difference if the dad is not there talking against this dad and these kids. No, but we did have a dad in the household that was pouring into his his child. But what I'm saying is, okay, your mom has five kids. Only one father was actively involved with the kids. The other four, your dad was dead. I'm not going to speak on everybody else's dads, but none of them were active. As Tommy was a kid, but she did cause division as... She did. He didn't want um, one of the kids, our kids, um, my siblings' father, to come to the house to see his kids. I remember that one. You know what I'm saying? I he my mom wasn't allowed to talk to talk to me about my dad or bring him up in the house. So he, you know what I'm saying? I guess that. So that was still division. division. Okay. Yeah. Look, in prime example, prime example. All y'all have the same mom, but y'all so divided. 
Y'all are not close at all. And that's my point because there was a spirit of division implemented in the household, whether it was by your younger sister, dad, bottom line, it was in, it was, it was manifested. And you can see the outcome of the relationships based on the manifestation of what happened in the house. True. And that's my point. That is my point. So you really have to be mindful from a biblical perspective. Everything that God has given us from the Bible manuals to help us not harm us. And people fail to realize that they just, Oh, it's a lie. A white man wrote it. This and that is everybody's story. But if you really take it into context, it's really to help you not harm you. Well, people just take what they want to believe in and what fits their life. Bottom line. You know what I'm saying? So if this person fits the, the story and the happy ending I'm making up, everything about it is what, what I want to believe. That's true because people are going to take what they want to take. But this is the thing, right? Even with the Bible, even with the word, I tell people all the time, God is not going to always tell you something you want to hear. So people like to hear stuff that makes them feel good. Oh, yes. The compliments. But if they you look and read it in its full context, you will understand everything you read is not going to feel good because a lot of what you read and digest and you have to change. And in order to change, there's some sacrifices, some things you have to eliminate out your life and change. So if you read in the Bible and just feeling good, I don't know which Bible you read in because some things are going to make you uncomfortable to make you provoke change. OK, we got the point. Now, let's switch it up because it's not Bible study. So we're going to get I'm back. just making a point. <laughs> Sorry, it's to our listeners. She almost went to Sunday school on y'all asses. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you think that's funny? Oh, man. Because I don't think it's oh, funny. Oh, goodness. No, that's just a whole different other podcast. You know what I'm saying? We got to stay on Blended Family. You went to Sunday school on this. I just feel you like, okay, but it's all a part no, of Blended deep. Families. I, I, I agree. It, just, it goes it's, it's beyond like a, it's just your instruction. It's your instruction book, book. But you know what I'm saying? I mean, you take that as an instruction book. Because a lot of stuff I get, I don't read the instructions, and I be having a hard time trying to figure it out. I'm just trying to learn as I go. And I think a lot of that p- falls into life. Yes. That's why we have so many problems, because we don't want to take the instructions that's right in front of us and use it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And I'm not just talking from Bible. I'm talking about from older people that been through your situation and be like, hey, you shouldn't do this. This is going to lead you to jail. So you want to be a hard head and oh, I got to do do my shit myself. And I won't, you know what I'm saying? It's like we don't take instructions. People don't use the instructions, period. But you know the dumbest. Hold on, hold on. Before, okay. you, cut, before you cut me off right there. I you know what I'm saying? Finished, but go ahead. Because now pay attention. Instructions don't come in the boxes no more. Oh, really? You got to look it up on the internet because now companies understand that people don't read instructions it's a waste of their paper so look how deep waste that is you know what i'm saying pay attention when you so buy waste. something it's not the instructions are not there they give it's you a, a barcode to find it on the internet it's a waste of their overhead it's, it's a waste of my paper. time giving you these instructions because you're not going to read it no that's life i don't think it's a waste of your time i think it's a uh, no this is what the, the company save costs feels. this no, is the like save costs why am i going to print out paper Pay for paper, put it in here. You're not going to read it when it's I give you a barcode. Yeah, it's a waste. Yeah. That's my saying. That I just said that it's a waste. Not of their time. It's 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 money, resources, money. Okay. everything. It's a waste. But so the, now people don't do it. Companies the, don't do it. The dumbest thing I've ever heard said, and people say this all the time. I would never listen or take advice from someone that I don't want to change places with. I think that's dumb. What do you mean change places with? People basically saying if you're not in a certain level of life, like, for example, I'm not going to take advice from you. Like if Because I don't want to be you. I don't want to show information. That's what you're saying. That's how I take it. But I'll take it but a look, step. Let me talk. But look. No, let huh? me talk. <laughs> let me take it a step. This is why I keep losing my train of thought because you keep cutting me off. So let me take it a step further. So even to say, like, if a person's marriage is not thriving, I wouldn't take advice from them. Right. But you only know what they show you. Listen, listen, let me finish. I believe you could get advice from anybody. Because even if you got a crappy marriage, you could tell me everything what not to do. I don't think a person has to be in a certain position. If if you, if you To tell me what to do or what not to do. If I want to be a millionaire and you never made a million, you could tell me everything what not to do. The person that made a million can tell me their blueprint of everything they did to get the million. So what I'm saying is, it's I don't still something you can learn. You can learn something from any and everybody. You can learn something from a baby if you watch them. 
I got to share this story because I always share this story. My goddaughter. How does Daisy like eight? My daughter, my goddaughter. So my sister has 12 kids, right? So we are her, one of her kids' godparents. And she dropped Daisy off with me like it too much. Now, at this time, my baby is old enough that I ain't had kids in a long time. 16. She, 16 years since you had a baby. It wasn't 16 years because this is when years. Daisy was a baby. Well, 14, 12, shit. No, oh, no. it was it's, it's 10 plus. Bottom line, anyways, at the end of the day, this baby kept crying. So I was putting on Baby Einstein, all this soothing music on the TV, right? Kept crying, kept crying, kept crying. I'm like, what is wrong with this baby? So I'm trying to put little baby stuff because, mind you, I had a kid. I know how to soothe the kid, but she just won't stop crying. You come in. He puts in on this action, Jackson, shoot him up, bang, bang, car crash and movie on. Baby shuts right up. What did she teach me? In that moment, a two-month-old baby taught me she was comfortable in chaos. Why? Because she was in the house with 11 siblings, and it was always chaotic. She didn't want it to be quiet. A peaceful house was uncomfortable for her. Even though the chaos and all that is a total different story because that goes into people are comfortable in chaos and they don't even know it. Even though from her early age, she was already being taught to be comfortable with chaos. But that's a whole different other podcast. But my point is a two month old taught me something. So I never dismiss anything. I'm never going to be arrogant and say, oh, if I don't want to change places. No, I'm going to listen to everything you say. Because even the stuff that doesn't make sense, you're still you're still teaching me something. Because I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to. So you're teaching me something. Now, going to what I'm saying. Damn, I thought that Blended was families. it. Shit. <laughs> God damn, I'm sitting here waiting my turn. Go and ahead. Shit. Like, Go ahead. Minutes. Go ahead. So, <laughs> I'm done for God. <laughs> like, I was Oh, my winded. goodness. Hold on. Oh, my do, goodness. I'm going to let you go. No, because you were saying, um, I'm trying to remember what you were saying, that um, taking learning from somebody. So you saying it's hot. Can somebody learn about being in a blended family if they're not in a blended family? Yes. Agree. Because they could become they could came from a blended family. Because right now people probably think, well, y'all not in a blended listen, family, but we came from a blended but family. But listen, I don't even dis I disagree with that because for example, People would get mad at me and like, well, you don't understand what it's like to date and you don't understand what it's like to have baby, different baby daddies not helping you because you have a husband that helps you. Yes, because wisdom told me I didn't want to be in that situation. So I made certain decisions. So this is why I say just because a person has never been in a situation does not mean they don't understand it or they can't give you advice. Some things people are not in because they made wise decisions to not be in that situation. And that's why I say you should never be like, because a person didn't go through something, they can't give you advice. Uh, Some, hold on, hold on. I'm going to have to cut you off on that. How? Because let's, let's, let's go through the, the therapist's point of view. Okay. Because I hear a lot of people, I don't want that therapist because they can't relate to me. They only know book information. That's different. They ain't experienced the streets. That's different. Life. They can't tell me nothing. But you just said they could tell. They could teach you something. But they don't. All they know is I, the book. No, listen, listen. That doesn't apply to everybody. You, you, you. You're generalizing. That doesn't apply. There are therapists that only know book, which means they don't know how to relate personal life experience. They don't have life experience. I say life experience is the best teacher all the time. What I'm saying is it's a difference between me saying I don't want multiple baby daddies. So I'm not going to do this, 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 this and this. So when you see me and you say, well, she can't tell me nothing about dating. She can't tell me anything about what I'm dealing with with multiple baby daddies because she doesn't have that. No, I made the conscious decision to not be in that situation. It's a difference between not knowing a world, not understanding a world and making a decision to not become a part of that world. Okay. Two total different topics. We got you. So you, you you know the streets, but you ain't you ain't read it in the book. It's basically you lived it, but not read. It. It's not in the book. No, basically, I don't have to go through something to understand it. Like people will be like, "Oh, you don't, you don't, you can't tell me anything because you don't understand." No, I understand it. I may not know what it feels like to be a baby mama, 
but I understand it is why I'm not a baby mama. No, you just picked the winner, baby. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> back to blended families. And I get a coin for that one. Yeah, you know it didn't saying? even make you sense. Know, what? But you back got, to blended. got a winner over here. Don't get mad because you picked the winner. <laughs> I got a winner. I won't dispute that. I do have a winner. So back to blended families and the way it could break you or build you. Um, it's your choice how you let that affect you. Some blended families is beautiful. I know a, a family that adopted a little girl and they show her nothing but love. You can't even tell the difference that she's adopted. And the that's, crazy thing that's is beautiful. she looked like them too. Yes, and that's beautiful love in that household. But you know those are people, okay, but that ain't a blended family though. That's adoption. Well, I guess it's I'm still blended, blended because she's not, you know what I'm saying? When it's I think of blended, blended you think about different parents with eyes but you got to even think as child blended you know what i'm saying the children point of view but i think blended you know families saying? but let's look at the definition is when people come in with kids already come in together i mean everybody i take it i take it blended families basically yeah here. so no blended Listen. family a family consisting of a couple and their children from this and all previous relationships so that wouldn't be considered a blended in family. my eyes is considered a blended family okay but it's we're still it, it's a beautiful thing that they could but see it's but in that situation why I won't describe it as a blended family because it's a, a married couple making a conscious decision hey we want a baby hey we want to love that's different between two people meeting each other already with families coming in and trying to make it work because you got to think like this too even let's just take the parents out from the kids let's say you meet somebody Y'all both got teenage kids. Are the teenagers going to be attracted to each other? Because I've seen that happen before, too. Yes. It, they're not biological. So you got to navigate those waters. You got a, a boy and a girl that's teenagers in the same house. And they're not probably looking like this is my sister and my brother. So that's the issue. You know, then the issue with, you know, them making the, the kids come together as one as if they're siblings. So it's a whole host of different dynamics. The difference with us is. We came into the, uh, at such, you know, a young age with our blended families, but there are so many different dynamics that plays into that. It could be a beautiful thing. It could be a disaster. I think it's a beautiful thing when God puts it together, but if not, I think it could be a disaster because maybe it was never meant. But let's even take it farther than blending families. And it, you don't even tap, you touched the basis on this with, um, favoritism. Um, so we're going to play as favoritism in your family as growing up. You have that favorite child, which also now this favorite child have kids. Now them kids be the favorite grandkids. You know what I'm saying? That's part of the blended blended family as showing the division of Not necessarily. separation of now these kids is like inherit the the, the favorite card. You know what I'm but saying? But that don't like, have to be a blended family. And y'all can check that out on my book, Identifying and Breaking the Cycle. This is when I talk about fa uh, favorites in the family. But you can have a... Uh, a family that's not a blended family and a parent. Well, we talking about blended family though. Okay. You know but I'm, saying? but so. I'm going to say it goes both ways from my perspective. Um, that's, that's your input. And now I'm able to give my input. So for based <laughs> on my input, blended and not blended families, there could be a favorite in the family, which is all dysfunctional because I don't think there should ever be a favorite period. But it's obvious. It is. I don't it's have a favorite. I don't have a favorite. I don't think. No, I think when you when you so you have a favorite. No, I don't have a favorite. Exactly. So how could there always be a favorite? I think when you're operating from a dysfunctional but place. That's, that's why I said in blended families, because if all I had. But all I, blended if, families are dysfunctional. Because if I had stepkids, my kid would be the favorite. And that's what I'm saying. We talking about from blended families point of view. That person, last whoever, podcast, that last person, podcast. Why are you making it personal? <laughs> why are you making it personal? Because I'm saying, why are you making it personal? The person, the person, your parents is together and you got outside kids. That person, that couple that's together, but become that, that grandkids will become the favorite. I don't, I think I, it depends you know on the people. I think it depends on the people because if you're operating from an unhealthy place, yes, but everybody that has blended families are not operating from an unhealthy place. And that's why you have blended families that thrive and they become one and you would never be able to tell. And then you got blended families. That's a disaster. So it just depends on who the people are. But why do you think the grandkids inherit their favoritism? Because I think like anything that manifests. Okay. You reap what you sow. Any seed you plant is going to bring forth life. 
So if you plant favoritism, it's going to go to the next generation. Just like I was saying with division, it's the same thing. If you plant a seed, expect for it to grow because you're going to water it, good or bad. The principle works both ways. Hey, she don't mean growing out your backyard in your your um, garden. They understand, and if you don't, I don't. You listen to the no, podcast. Sometimes I got to be clear with my audience. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't think <laughs> my viewers are I'm listeners. I be reading my comments. A lot of them are slow. Sorry, y'all. That's so disrespectful. <laughs> that is so disrespectful. Uh, you ain't read my comments. Why would you? Say, you no, I think people comments. in your comments my just you, basically like to be negative. There's a lot of slow ones in there. It's like, That's so disrespectful. They was like, dude, you know you could go to jail for burning that money? I said, you can't see the video that was fake money? Um, I think a lot of times people dude. just like to, to have something to say. But anyways, going back to blended <laughs> families, I think it could be a beautiful thing, as I was saying. Um, shout out. I want to give a shout out to all the beautiful blended family. No, seriously, seriously to the blended families out there and to the men or women that are taking care of their kids that are not biologically theirs and loving on them as if they were. Cause that that's big for me. And stop saying this is my stepchild. Yeah. That's, that's like a, uh, uh, it makes a child feel, um, it made you feel. Remember, you you, you you're personalizing it. You personalize it. You personalize. No, to go on mute. Real no, quick. Like, you like last podcast. You stop. Y'all hear that moment of silence? And I put her mic on mute. She can't. You can't hear her nonsense. <laughs> you're personalizing it no, because you, just no. I'm just that's saying. your experience. Because it never bothered me. That's what I'm that's, saying. When you, and that's you personalizing. Exactly. So, so when you, you got to ask the you, kid what they want. We, okay, you have to true. ask the kid. But sometimes people don't ask the kid. When you, oh, this is my step. So kid. then that's what you should be saying. When you are in a blended family, you should ask the kid, how do they want to be represented? Because each kid may think differently. Because I know growing up, in a blended family, it was like I was being disloyal to my mom to say that was my mom. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, I never, I never claimed that. Yeah, that's, so, that's different. But just so I think it's like you coming from a child point point of view. I am coming a, from a child's as point, an adult of view, point of view. But though. that's what I'm saying from a kid's perspective. I would have never said this is my mom and been like mom because I felt like it was disloyal to my mom based on what my mom was feeding me. So you never just assume what a kid wants. I think this is why it's big to have these conversations with the kid. Yes. Well, you're a blended family. So have a conversation with the kids. Ask them how do they want to be addressed and how do you want to be addressed? Yeah. Do you may not want to be mom or dad. You want to. And, and I think for adults, you shouldn't be offended if the kid doesn't want to call you mom or dad. Because you got to understand from a psychologically, from a kid's perspective, they may feel like they're being disloyal to their parent. They may feel like their parent is going to be mad at them. So many different things. It's not always a black and white situation. And this is why I say kids should be at the forefront of a priority when you're making decisions and bringing people into their lives, into the home. Because it's not just about you. It's going to affect that kid also. Amen. That's the coin. Oh my goodness! That is. You don't think that was a coin? Damn, I think when is. I should get, maybe I should be in tr- control of the coins because when I feel like <laughs> you need to get something your, is a coin, you get your change game. You up, don't baby. put it, <laughs> and then the simplest stuff you'd be like, "Oh, that's a coin." Like, no, nah, but I just said this, this back there. That was like a, 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 a whole bar it of metaphors. Like you want to stroke your own ego, but um. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be honest. She's dropping bars over here. Only her two two bars in this whole conversation. Okay, man. I said, and I, and I, I'm gonna be honest. Sometimes when I speak, I don't know because I'm a speaker. I was like, oh, that was good. Look, Hold on, no, I do gotta say you this. I tell people you a speaker. Hold on, I'm a speaker too. Listen, so when that was just the last episode when I said the root pluck something but i was like oh i didn't even yeah i might do a little speech on that that was real good but anyways you stole it from me see i didn't get that boy because i'm a speaker y'all i thought of that right then and there you look at my notes look at my notes you ain't got no notes (laughs) stop lying so that's our our, our point of view on blended families um always i was raised in a blended family she was raised in a blended family and now we don't have a blended family intentionally um and, and I guess that's about it on blended family. We got any questions out there? Yeah, my question is, I don't have a question, but I do want to say 
I said intentionally, but there is nothing wrong. There isn't anything wrong with the blended family. And if it works for you, make it work. Like I said, it's, it's a beautiful thing when it's done the right way. And on that note, we're going to wrap this episode up. You can find me on all social medias at I am Grindface. And you can find her at what? Everything's Sania Mayo. And you can also get her books at SaniaMayo.com. It's a good read, y'all. Um, until next time, y'all, man, I got to come with a good outro now. You know what I'm saying? Until next time, continue to break cycles. We out. <laughs>